Let's start out with our first question. How does the movie say it? When did you discover hip hop? <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll jump into this. Is that cool? Okay, cool. So for me, uh, primarily everything came to me in the home first. I'll say the home and church. Um, those, those two spaces were really important for me. Uh, they cultivated me. I was able to uh, cultivate myself. I'm the youngest of four children. My, my brother, who is the second oldest, is how I was getting every sonic you could think of from hip hop to house. Uh, my mom was the gospel and, and soul records, and we had a vinyl record. And so, um, so, so there, there goes the sounds, right, that I'm being exposed to. Um, the energy and the movement, the embodiment of it, um, first was seeing it before I had words to speak, being raised in the church, seeing the elders catch the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of those Church of God in Christ church tongue talking foot stomping yes, hand clapping uh, so that would happen and as a child I would just connect with that energy of that that mm -hmm. to me symbolized oneness with everything oneness with uh with everything so so I've always known dance to be this internal thing that manifests outwardly so that was always like if it wasn't that it wasn't dancing for me um my brother being the youngest uh he would make me and my middle brother battle each other for his for his enjoyment so <laughs> Um, I didn't, it, my, my dance started off as freestyle and because I was influenced by seeing what the spirit of being in the spirit was, it was all about what it, what does it feel like and allow that to take form and shape physically. Um, and so that became my practice. And of course, you know, by the time I got into kindergarten, I was shown the backspin and the worm for my brother. And that was my go-to for show and tell that cultivated. Uh, I continued to dance. I would learn steps from my cousins. They were from St. Louis, so social dances like the monastery, monastery before it became the chicken head, um, and and learning the cabbage patch on the front steps of church by this uh, woman named Nita. <laughs> you know, like so. So when I think about it, um, the the cultivation was in house first, and then. Um, my elders, when I would go visit my grandparents, they had a they had a jukebox record with 45s in it, and I would love going over to their basement parties because they would, you know, the old folks would be at the bar and they would be sipping, and the young folks would be there and they would be dancing. And um, I learned partner dancing from my grandma grabbing me and or my aunt grabbing me and, and showing me like two steps, and and so um, that was a part that 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 connection. And then of course. They throw a Michael Jackson song on. That was my time to, to go off in the circle. So, so that was that, and that, and that, and that kept on into my like uh, early teens, and I started sneaking out. I grew up in a, I grew up two and a half hours south of Chicago, um, in Bloomington Normal, and so there were a lot of imports from Chicago. My brother had a, a hip hop crew called MOC Masters of Creativity, and everybody except for him was from Chicago. So. The DJ, DJ C Rock, uh, his his rhyming and dancing partner, uh, Corey used to go by New Ed Daddy. Um, so I was seeing this, and and I, and so I wanted to dance, and so I'm sneaking out, going to kegger parties and frat parties, and uh, the the Q Dogs used to come down, and they would do these parties every summer, and I just remember going to these parties, and and um, dipping into these spaces, and having U Fi U and House of Maddox come to Bloomington and perform at the Lafayette Club. Um, which is where I first learned the skateboard. And so on and on, it wasn't until later that I'm like, oh, there's a whole world of dance outside of like all of the my own in intimate connections that have been through cousins, through friends, through sneaking out to spots. And um, I started, my brother went, was in school in Chicago, so I came and visited him for the summer and started going to spaces. Nitro, I want to say, was key because if you know about Nitro, you know. <laughs> that was a wild space. And it was one of the spaces you could get in being under 21. Everybody has And so space. there, I, I would intermix with, I was freestyling, so primarily I learned and I adopted the term flexing because Chicago back in the day called their hip hop freestyle dancing flexing. So I would, flexing, I would start to meet flexors and housers and footworkers and breakers all in the same space and just kind of begin to grow and nurture all of these. So, um, Anyway, there's, there's so much to that. 
uh, um, just being in all the different spaces, Zentra, uh, Cinnabar, um, uh, Big Wigs, uh, Slicks was my go-to vortex. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually how I came across him at Kelsa probably over a little over 20 years ago. No spaces, so that's a that's a general gist, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just want to start by saying <clears throat> thank you to uh, Maida and Honeypot Performance for hosting this and curating it. It's just such a, an amazing and important um, project and work that's happening, and I'm really honored to be here. Um, and uh, so yeah, I guess I'll start um, by you know I first just want to say that it's it's also I'd, um, doesn't pass me being uh, a white guest in the culture, and I just think it's important to sort of acknowledge myself in the space as a guest. Um, and so, yeah, I'll just talk a little bit about my journey and sort of even how, how the journey of sort of thinking of myself in that way and, um, and all the politics and things involved in that. But um, so I'm from Evanston, Illinois, born and raised. Um, and if anybody knows anything about the history of Evanston, it um, was one of the first uh, decidedly or purposely integrated communities in the country. Um, and I grew up in a part of Evanston that was sort of right on the sort of dividing line. So they, they tried to integrate Evanston, but yet it was also very uh, segregated, right? So we had sort of like black and white pockets of Evanston. And I grew up right on the sort of dividing line between those two sections and my particular block was incredibly diverse um, and so and my schools um, were very diverse. Um, so anyway, the, the youth subculture in Evanston growing up there was really, really influenced by black culture. Um, and so um, hip hop was like underground hip hop in the late 80s, early 90s was really influential. Um, I learned just, you know, you're talking about like learning a lot of the hip hop social dances at the time I was learning them like outside of my house on my block, at parties. There were um, the white parties I went to all the time that were like DJ'd by the older kids. Um, it was all pretty much hip hop music. Hip house got really big in the late 80s. Um, I remember learning my first like jacking movement in those spaces. Um, and uh, I in particular remember a kid named Noli uh, who was really like, there was this style of jacking that I remember him doing back in the, at that time period that um, it's just sort of like a deep memory. We actually live below his brother now, which is <laughs> crazy. Um, and uh, let's see. So that's sort of my early Evanston years. I went to college at U of I. Well, let me say two things that were important that are significant to me in sort of my history and these spaces and forms. But um, one is just like being influenced by um, the, those sort of dance forms, culture, spaces that were coming out of black culture, black social dance. Um, the other was uh, just recognizing that there were these, while a lot of white Evanston was saying like, oh, we're kumbaya, everything is, you know, um, we're all about everybody being valued here and, and everybody be tra being treated the same. It was clearly that that was not the case. Um, you know, I could see very clearly in the tracking system, things were, uh, you know, uh, it was, it, there was a stark sort of contrast in terms of how white and black children were being treated. Um, and so I became really interested in social justice and organizing and I went to college sort of thinking about those issues and then also dancing a lot. Um, so I got involved in um, Guys and Dolls, a bunch of people that I met from um, Whitney Young, um, Kenwood, and started dancing with a lot of dance troops in college that um, were from the city and uh, got introduced to a lot of the footwork culture at U of I, um, was really big. Um, anyway, after college I moved to South America and was really, um, started to train in capoeira and samba, moved back here, um, and it was around early 2000 that we met, and this is when, so I was in spaces that would mix everything, hip hop, house, um, a lot of different music genres and, and dance movement, um, but around 2000, started going to Smart Bar, Red Dog, all, Zentra, all those spaces, and just, it changed my life. One of the big sort of impacts was not growing up with religion or spirituality and um, finding it in those spaces. Like really having my first experiences where, you know, nobody, I didn't grow up with anybody being able to answer the question, is God real? And, you know, how do you connect with God? And in those spaces, I 
knew that God was real. I knew that things were coming through me in a way that was, um, thank you, that was, um, was beyond me, you know, and the connection between the bodies and the space and all of that. And so that uh, hit me really deeply. First of all, I have to acknowledge Dolphin Pride. And then um, <laughs> we're going to move on to a uh, that very interesting story and very interesting journey. And mm -hmm. I want to thank you for acknowledging your guest status in the mm -hmm. space. I uh, appreciate that. But know that it's also, especially with dance, it's about your intention and your heart. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah. we see that. The, the journey that the two of you have had is it encompasses some of everything. Um, both of you has sp has spoken about house and um, hip hop and breaking and uh, voguing and everything else all in the same space, um, and that really has influenced the type and the style and the way of dance that you do. Um, can you speak to me about that? How that really influences what it is you do? Breakers like they were primarily in their crews, and. Um, Man, battle, you want to talk about battling, like the battles are so real, fights would break out sometimes. Um, and and so for me, I knew house because it, it you know, was I, it was something I grew up with, but I wanted that soulful, loving connection. So I actually, I think in, form of, in the form of like the yin-yang, right, where yang is this really, um, you could say like masculine energy and yin is identified as like this feminine energy. I would go to the house spaces to be, more internal to get away from some of the um what you might call machismo or like that needing the to prove or culture. live in the ego right um and so because it reminded me of church right and so that was where um i would find that space and so for for a long time those spaces were separate in my two worlds and people were trying to figure me out like well, are you house are you hip-hop like are you a b-boy like what are you and um I, i'm like i'm a i'm a mover like I didn't start dancing because it it was uh, it's something I grew up with. So it was a di I had a different connection with it, and it was self-expression. But then you know, a New York hip hop culture the cipher is about show and prove, right? Mm -hmm. Like what do you stand on? And so I learned how to bring that energy into this uh, to the to the circle, and then the love and acceptance and the and the and the lose it and go black out. I would go. I would go into my house spaces, and 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 that was a different type of stamina. Learning to dance for three to five hours, you know, and that was where I would cultivate. So that was my, and I would take influence from all the bodies in the spaces. Plus, my own little mind was already all over the place. So, so I'm flipping and mixing, and um, I treated it like martial arts, where when you learn a form, you learn a form. And then when it comes into application. It is whatever has comes out of your intuition, mm -hmm. and so for me, freestyle is so so important to me because that in the spaces I would always hear I would hear music where I didn't know it, and and for me the goal was to become one with the music, and so I felt like I started you know I know I started to have that co connection with the music and the DJ which was like the drummer. So for me it was about I did my pilgrimages I went to New York I went to L.A. I cultivated in Chicago. Um, I I disciplined myself to learn enough to where I felt like I could honor each form, cultural space, the people who identified in those spaces, be accepted in, and then I could li have my own complete uh, totality of myself exist in all these spaces. But it was it wasn't like it wasn't it was a battle. It was a journey because even some of the older house heads used to be like like we don't do circles here. You know what I mean? Yes. And so there's that. Some people are like, we do them. Some people are like, we don't. It just depends on who you was around and where you was at. So, so yeah. So for me, those worlds all existed. But I can't say that that was like the true of the state. I think of the times later that the internet and things like that would come, it would start to become more influential in cross and in all style events where dancers from all places would be like pitted to battle against each other. So. Hmm. <laughs> I see I see that in the way that you speak about your dance and that you know the names of all of your dance moves. Mm -hmm. That's you learning the form to me. But then your your freestyle, your self-expression 
is is your pre presentation of it is is totally unique in you. It's sort of like a jazz approach to music. We learn everything and then get on the bandstand and improvise. Um, I see I see that in the way you speak about it, um, Kelsa. You have a lot in your bio. There's a lot of studio. Not actually, not really. Yeah, I can talk about it about like the the bulk of my training. Um, so I did gymnastics, so that was definitely like a trained, you know, go to a space. And the kids used to make fun of me, actually, in my neighborhood, because we would tumble on the street all the time, and they were like, you take classes, you take lessons. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but dance was primarily social, social. first. Like mm -hmm. I took, or I'm, um, you know, I learned like the hip hop social dances of the mm -hmm. time. Um, that was sort of my first entry into dancing. And then when I went to college, I, I learned from dancers who were trained in studios, like the, jo the um, Whitney Young dancers, Guys and Dolls. So I'd, I'd learned some Dunham technique from them. Mm -hmm. um, that was sort of my first modern training. My uh, neighbor on the block, my first sort of like studio class was West African out of her um, backyard. She had a studio in her garage. Um, and then, but most of my dancing was always social, in social. like in the parties, in the clubs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it, again, from all over. So like I, I did um, a lot of Latin dancing as well. But house was the space where I really started to, I felt one of the things that was so, I guess, significant for me was how I was able to pull all the parts of who I was into that space. It wasn't like, you know, that sort of, you know, uh, I actually, when I moved beyond and started, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but like got into the underground, like set up battle scene. That's when I felt like I had to sort of, call myself a house dancer, but in-house I found my identity because I didn't feel like it was structured in that way. It wasn't telling me you have to do these particular moves, you know. I was able to pull from everything, you know, that I had been doing and I also appreciated the way that I could express myself in terms of feminine, masculine, you know, move between those kind of identities and not feel sort of lopped off um, in terms of a particular gender expression. Um, and I'll say one more thing that was really significant in the house spaces is that I had like um, an undiagnosed um, physical condition, like a systemic condition that caused a lot of pain and injury. And so it's why I quit gymnastics. It's why I eventually quit capoeira. It's why I never got into breaking really deeply. Um, and so, but house was a space where I was, because there was so much freedom there, I was able to dance all night. Now, granted, I was popping like ibuprofen like crazy and probably smoking a little bit to ease the pain, but I could dance like all night, partly because of the freedom of being able to move the way it worked for my body. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think it's time now to see a bit of that freedom and structure that you guys meld together so well. I'm ready.
Yeah. Okay, so that's like one of my favorite songs. So I was feeling it. I could feel it. One my brother thing. would play that all the time. Mm-hmm. And my mom would identify that song as ooh, oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that is the cut, Daze. Um, so one of the things I noticed as I was over here jacking with y'all is that I saw some of everything, as you do, but even the aesthetics of it, I saw partnering. I saw individual expression. I saw feeding off of one another, um, partnering sort of more in line with the stepping um, tradition or new bop. Excuse me, I learned my term. <laughs> the new bop tradition, uh, you know, the freedom and the expression of the house, as you as you said, and then you know the act breaking down in there. I did see some of everything in the way that you guys meld that together. It is a sort of a different, uh, a different sight to see. It's sort of like the progression of all of the social dances sort of like coming together, not all of, but a lot of the social dances like coming together. Um, where, you mentioned um, clubs and spaces, but like the worlds were separate, but where do you guys get to perform as, as you bring everything together? Where do you get to practice um, not necessarily perform, because uh, that's everywhere now, but wh- how is it that you practice when you go among? Are you still going into separate spaces to practice, or is it? And, well, any place I step, I'm going to bring whatever it is. I'm going to bring myself fully, but the music always, to me, dictates. What's the vibe? I'm an energy-sensitive person, so what's the vibe of the people? That might present how open I am or how in I am in protecting and holding that energy. Um, that I get a chance to vibe and warm out and get into my zone. Because if I do that, then I can be, I can, I can reach like, an, it's like a level up for me, right? So those things all determine um, how the dance comes out. And in, in different spaces, it's going to show different. And you'll see when we get to the artifacts, like mine are particularly all videos and they're all different kind of spaces with different intentions. And so my movement comes out a little bit different in each one. Um, even this was like weird, like I want y'all to be moving with us, you know what I'm saying? And so I've always had to try to flip to go from, uh, am I ciphering, am I performing, am I battling, am I showcasing, right? And I try to remove all of that because those are all like, to me, illusional constructs that we create to sell and market stuff in this capitalistic system. But if we can see the through line, what tethers all these together, they're all connected. What's the intention of the movement? So I let the music speak to this. And then that, that, that's going to kind of, you know, whenever I'm there, if I'm too heady and I'm thinking about it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be off. And I'm going to be like, oh, I was off. So I'd rather just be open and let it flow. So I hope that helps, that answers. Yeah, I mean, I've always sort of had a... Um the, the times that I felt like I have to practice outside of the club space, the party spaces, I just, it's like pulling teeth, like I'm not that interested. And I've just, I come to just sort of accept that about myself that I have to go to those spaces to, pra- to practice, you know? Um, that's what moves me and that's what then gives me inspiration to come back and then create, you know, if we're making a piece or something. To, to put it out on a stage, which again is a very different kind of a platform and it does shift things, teaching shifts things, but it's always going back to that space to be refueled, to remember what it's about, you know. I just want to add because I, be- I believe that as you do these things in your different spaces, it builds you in different ways. So for me, I think uh, battling, performing, ciphering, and teaching are all different kinds of energy and they, cu- they cultivate the whole, they cultivate the whole. Um, and so even like I teach at Columbia as well and, um, freestyling, battling, those are all things that are part of the rites of passage for going through a course. It isn't about what's just in that studio. And oftentimes I say it all lives outside the studio. Studio is just a designated time and space. We get to focus on specific aspects of it. 
Uh, yeah, and just uh, just I just want to lift up again about that connection, and and I just want to shout out to like uh, Jarvis when I see him at a place, I'm like yes, like ah, uh, give me that energy, you know, like it, it lifts me up, it brings me joy. The times that I've gotten the honor to see Erica and Michael dance together, like oh, it just it like ah. Uh. Mm. Yes. So let's see some of that. Let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm really excited to be able to bring Desi's name into the space. So this is Des uh, so Desmond Stewart, who back then was known as Desi Star, that's what we all called him, um, one of my favorite partners to move with. During the time that I was like really heavy and finding myself in the house spaces from like 2000 to 2005, one of the people I partnered with all the time and was just really interested in that that hand to hand and and part you know a part dancing, but that connection, uh, an amazing dancer. And that's just, this is that funky Buddha. Uh, yeah. Pevin Everett night, you see the, the Congos in the back. Yeah, so we, and Brave, and I, and Boogie, and uh, Debbie, Jason. and we used to come in and dance as part of Pevin Everett sets on Wednesday nights. This is, so in this era, this time period, um, for the people that were really um, important and influential for me at the time, so that's Boogie McLaren in the back, who I also, I heard in your bio, Jarvis, like, I remember um, taking a class from Boogie at um, Old Town, and she was really influential, I think, to a lot of us in also seeing the the, the intersection between the club spaces and, and other spaces that we could take it. So this was a performance that we did at a space called Chicago Soul House, the Brave Monk, and then in the front, that's Jason Yee, uh, otherwise known as House Mouse, who's originally from the East Coast and was one of the people that eventually, towards the end of that period, helped me realize that there was some other things going on with house as a movement form out in the world that was really eye-opening and interesting. So that's another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this leads into, um, this is a, from a TV show called Hot, Hot Wax. They were dedicated to underground and they would do movement and visuals and they would always have DJ. This is uh, DJ Fathom. And um, here you kind of get to see me go through a journey and this is more like what it would be of me in a club. I'm open. I'm, I'm having this connection with the DJ who was like the drummer and the pulse. And so I move like my arms are free. I feel, um, you know, this is what I would describe as more fluid movement. And uh, although this was, you know, this was filmed at a Can TV set, um, this was 2005. And. Um, you can see I'm, re I'm repping, I got a B-Boy Summit shirt on. B-Boy Summit is an event that used to happen out in Cali. And this was like the last one. And so I went to that. And so as the DJ goes low, and I haven't heard, like, I know this is because it's Pevin, so I kind of do know this. But I'm completely surrendering to the music. And so I want to let you catch this. You're going to see some movements that also I identify as like Chicago aesthetic in here. So the bass start coming in. And automatically my chest is starting to move because I feel that in my bass. And so you see these hands. You see those hands coming. Um, That's very Chicago. But you see a lot of, yeah, in foot workers, y'all y'all do that. Y'all know what it is. Um, and then so as that pulse, as that heavy bass starts picking up, you're going to start to see me go into more either footwork or jacking movement. And so now you see that bounce and that pulse. Um, lifting to me. And so this movement is kind of like what we did from the time I was young. I just remember my, me and my brother doing this to house. Um, and so, and um, yeah, let me see, here it comes. Don't, here we go. Ish, I, used to, I had some friends from the East Coast who would tell me like, Chicago, y'all are so bouncy. There we go, like, there we go, there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go, that. right? And so I didn't know a name for that. I just knew a feeling for it. <laughs> and that's what would happen. Later on, I would come to say, oh, they do this in dance hall. It's called Ponda River. Okay, so, okay. We can go to the next clip. 
Uh, this is from a judge showcase. This is bo Boogie. This is a transfer of energy. This would also happen in the club. So you're going to see the jack. And that's going to rub off to me. This is 2011. The classic song. And so this is something I used to do this. I've been doing since I was young. I called it praying to the heavens. Those are Zulu spins from breaking, but you'll see the influence of footwork right here. Uh, skating, because that also was an influence. So a lot of the slides. And y'all know what that is if you're from Chicago. <laughs> exactly. I didn't need to say it. And so I'm in the music. Man of God's trying to get me to stop. And I'm still going. Watch, watch this. <laughs> but I would, that was like me. I'm like, the music hit, I'm gone. Okay, so, so that was two different spaces. Me and the DJ. Uh, judge Showcase and now we're in. Go ahead, Kelsey, this is okay, you. Okay, so this is the House Dance Conference in Detroit, 2009 put on by a legendary dancer from New York who helped to spread house, like codified house movement around the world, uh, Brian Footwork Green. And this is one of the few times that I like was in a, one of these setup battles. And it was, it was focused on house, um, so. And the, the person that I'm battling on the other side, which he's an amazing dancer, his name is Kafani, he's from Detroit. Um, is an OG uh, from the house scene, also West African dance and uh, toured and danced with Inner City. Yeah. Like you can see a little bit of my like samba influence uh, from Brazil and ways that I would pull that in. I was never really into the like. Well, I would say I, one more thing. I'll say I did with the um, sorry with the. Uh, Sneaking out, I used to sneak out and go to Medusa's. Um, but the battles okay. that I enjoyed were oh the ones that happened in the club, like against people that came in from other clubs, you know, things like that. Can we get that last clip? Okay, this is from a battle. Um, this was in, in uh, Michigan. And uh, there was a lot of hate. And this is where I would start to ex experience what I would call anti-blackness. So this is 2010 against a, a, a guy who had just started, who I actually wound up losing this battle and I was in my feelings about it, but it didn't, I didn't really lose. Um, in any case, I'm gonna let y'all see the movement. You'll see a lot of stuff coming through. That's hip hop inspired with the ticking of the arms. Um, that's a crescent kick from uh, from martial arts. And um, everything was just about the flow. What is the flow? How does it speak to me? And I always begin in how, you, how do you tell your story, how do you start your story, and how do you end your story? And so skateboard, which New York likes to call skating, or the skate. That's definitely Chicago, but that's my own take on it. And then you see this this kick. And um, one movement, the dolphin dive, right? And so, and anyway, in the competitions, it was different. Like, you don't see the vibe. People are sitting down, lights, you got flashing lights, and you have to, I had to just really live in myself and let that energy show and say, I'm, I don't care. I don't care whether I win or lose. So anyway, yeah, that that's that's something that um, I'm noticing about how house has um, progressed as it's joined the mainstream, like the the energy and the feeling of being surrounded by people who are all jacking to the beat and holding each other up and 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 feeling it together, is kind of going to the wayside as we move into these competition and teaching and dance battle spaces. Um, where, you know, everybody's more concerned about the actual movement and the accuracy, so to speak, of it than the feeling of it. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I don't know. Tried to not put so much of how I feel into that, yeah. but yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's just how I see how it's it's changing a bit, um, and that and that is uh, I think something of it being moved into the mainstream, which is something that's happening to several of the dance forms that we're we're talking about today. They're moving into the mainstream and are changing a little bit. So I'd like to uh, say thank you. Can I get two cents on that though? Sure, I'm sorry. Just because I always feel like it's always it's a conversation. Everything is a conversation, right? Yeah. Even the even that is a conversation. But then it's about who's holding the space, who is benefiting from the space. I think those are like the deeper questions, mm -hmm. um, because uh, exposure can can be a really good thing. I think it's how it's done, how it's handled, how it's crafted. So there are instances where I do see it uh, being facilitated in a way that feels uh, more organic and natural. But um, you have all the spaces to exist in, and I think find the ones that speak to you. Speak to, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And on that note, which was the best note to leave on, we're going to say thank you to Brave and K Rock. <laughs>